Hello everybody, Slim Kirby here. Welcome back to more Let's Play Fire Emblem Path of Radiance. I gotta do this episode pretty quickly because I have to get to class. Uh, one of my classes got cancelled, but then I forgot that I still had my other class to go to, so... Hmm. Yeah, kind of irresponsible on my part, but... Hey. I'm irresponsible. I'm willing to admit that much. Okay, so thankfully I can finish up this boss with Soren. I would have gotten the experience with Rolf, but since that's a general, I really doubt Rolf would have been able to do any damage whatsoever. And Soren got a level up. Mm, not too bad. Would have preferred a little defense, but no big deal, I guess. And that being said, uh, we have actually opened that little area. So now uh, Volk can go inside and start stealing some treasure. Go for it, Volk. Go for it. First chest has a javelin. I think we all know what a javelin does by now. And I'm going to start escaping with my other units. The units I really don't plan to use anymore. Especially since there are no more enemies left in this chapter. Let's see, who else? Well, I can't escape with Ike just yet, so I'll leave him around for right now. Okay, it looks like Nephany and Brom have escaped. As for Sephiron, Sephiron doesn't turn into a yellow unit, so... Uh, you really don't need to worry about him. Uh, I guess you could try to rescue him and then try to take him over to the uh, escape point, but I really don't see the point in doing that. It just seems kind of silly and kind of stupid. Nor do I think you get any extra experience for that either, so... Just don't worry about it. I wouldn't worry about sending Sephiroth up there. Second chest, we have a Short Axe. A Short Axe is actually a, a two-ranged axe, like a hand axe. Only it does more damage and... There's another attribute it has as well. It might be a little heavier... But I don't know for sure. It might do... I know it does a little more damage, of course. Oh, wait. Uh, he got a counter from that chest. It's a skill. And this is a Steel Lance. You all know what a Steel Lance does, so... We got everything, so we can now leave. And I love how Volk just doesn't say anything. And we will take Ike and leave with him, and we are done with Chapter 9. I mean, 10. Yeah, this is Chapter 10, not 9. We already beat Chapter 9. So now we're going to talk to all the prisoners. We're going to learn that Kieran, who was part of the Crimean Knights, well, he's going to tell us that all of the Crimean Knights are actually okay. Uh, well, not all of them, but uh, General Joffrey's platoon is actually alright. And uh, he was actually the only one that actually got captured, so... It looks like we have to go help the Crimean Knights, but we probably won't do so for a while, since we have a mission already. We have to get to Crimea, and then board a boat, and then leave Crimea to go to Binyon. But Kieran is going to join us. He is going to lend his axe to our cause, so that's always a good thing. And Kieran will actually come in handy in this next chapter. Uh, usually when I use Kieran, he always is uh, helpful in this next chapter. Now we're going to talk to Brahm and Nephany. They're both farmers. Uh, they both work on a farm plantation. And they're actually just part of the uh, militia. A militia that was used to help fight off Dan. But obviously the militia did not work, but... Uh, Brom and Nephany are going to join us, though, because they like uh, the queen, or princess, I guess. She is only princess in this game. And now we're going to meet Sephiron, the other guy we saved. But uh, we really don't learn that much about him. We just learned that uh, he got involved helping, these, um, helping the militia heal their wounds. He really has no uh, point in the game right now, but... We'll, so, we'll soon learn more about him later on. Hmm. So he's pretty much going to cover up his identity. We'll find out who it is later on. 
He seems like a very mysterious character. But that about does it for chapter 10. I think now we're going to save our game. Oh, we're going to talk to Volk as well. Uh, Volk is going to once again ask if uh, he can travel with us. And it's really going to give us the same option it gave us back at the beginning of the chapter. Whether or not to hire him or not hire him. I guess that uh, the first time it was just to use him in that last chapter. And then you can just refuse him from here on out if you didn't want to take him with you. But personally there's really no reason not to accept. Volk's a pretty good character. So Volk is going to continue the game with us. So we do have a thief with us so we can actually get stuff from treasure chests. And we can also have him steal stuff from the enemy as well. Now, Renolf and Ike are going to talk about some deep stuff, I guess. It's all deep. And the rest of the video is pretty much going to be dialogue and more plot, so I'm not really going to go over most of that. Uh, I'll just try to find something to talk about. Uh, I guess I mentioned in the last video something about Go Connecticut. Well, for those of you who probably guessed correctly, I was talking about the NCAA uh, March Madness bracket-making uh, bonanza everybody goes through around this time. Uh, my bracket's looking pretty good. I'm in two pools. One pool is uh, with a family. And then I'm doing another poll with uh, YouTube users uh, Shadow Mario XLI, Sitarman345, and Power to Mario. And the winner of the whole uh, pool for that particular pool is that uh, you get a video game, or a WiiWare game, and then the loser has to pay for it. So I could come in second and uh, not really lose anything. I could come in third and not lose anything, but uh, I'm really going for first. I'm the only one who has Connecticut winning the whole thing. And Connecticut has been doing a really, really good job. They've been playing really good basketball. I think they're the only first seed in the tournament that is actually worthy of being a first seed. Uh, considering in the, their first game in the tournament, they beat the other team by like 60 points. So yeah, I'm really, I'm really, uh, I'm really placing all my bets in Connecticut on winning the whole thing. They're just doing a really good job, and I'm uh, really happy of all the great work they're doing because they might win me a video game. But the brackets still pretty, are still pretty close, though. Uh, Connecticut could get upset. You never know. Because uh, Missouri played very well yesterday, somehow. So they have to play Missouri next on Saturday. So I will be watching that game. So <laughs> you can probably uh, guess when I'd be cheering loudly and when I'd be damning the other team. <laughs> but yeah. Uh, pretty good. I like March Madness. I've been doing March Madness uh, brackets for about like uh, 10 years now. It's just something I like to do, especially with my family. And then I have been getting into betting for the actual pools lately as well. Okay, summary of the last battle. Boyd was once again the MVP. And we also got four new allies. And that's about it. We are at the base, which means the end of the video. Uh, join us next time on, I think, Monday for the next Fire Emblem Path of Radiance. See you later, guys. I'm going to class.